So next, let's talk about you know, what a lot of the research is showing. Now, I told you a minute ago that the SIRT1 protein is, in, is increased with fasting. So this, is, you know, this, this is, was published, this is an image that was published from the journal Cell Communications and Signaling. And so we're just talking about the SIRT1 gene and you can see all these different beneficial um, elements that are involved in the SIRT1 gene. So with metabolic diseases, we know that improving SIRT1 gene function improves the action of the pancreas. So it helps your pancreas, but it also helps to um, cause weight loss. So through fat burning, so fat burning, helping to lead to weight loss. So we know through metabolic disease, we know activating SIRT1 is very important. Again, that's an outcome of fasting. We know that epigenetics in terms of, of DNA and DNA repair, we know that fasting is, so we're talking about cancer here, right? Because cancer generally, what does that, what does that equate to? Many cancers are where either you are producing genes um, or your genes are producing proteins that become damaged, okay? And, and that, those epigenetic impacts on damaged DNA can lead to the, the production of tumors and other types of cancers. So all these different functions here um, are benefits of activating SIRT1, which is, it increases the repair to your DNA when your DNA is damaged. It increases tumor suppression, so it helps to produce chemicals that suppress tumor formation. It works on stabilizing your genetics. It works on, um, up here, transcription activity of P53, which is a cancer-fighting gene. So there's a lot of benefits to cancer with fasting as well. We know that from an adipose or fat cell perspective, it reduces fat accumulation in your fat cells. It also helps to break fat cells down and improves your insulin sensitivity. So very important as it relates to weight loss. We know that um, cell aging, it reduces replication uh, of components that damage, uh, that damage your genes, that damage your, your DNA. We know it increases telomere stability. A telomere is, is, is a predictor of how long you're gonna live. A telomere is like a, an end cap to your DNA, and we want your telomeres to be nice and long and stable. When they shorten and they become unstable, generally your DNA breaks down easier and you're more prone to cancers. You're also more prone to aging. Uh, we also know, again, this is in mice, this study, the, the research is, is very clear in mice, but also in, in, uh, in apes and in other primates. We know that caloric restriction fasting increases lifespan dramatically. There's some research studies that show by 20%. So how many of you would like to live a 20% longer lifespan? How many of you would like to live a, a much healthier quality of lifespan? So you had more years to your life, but you had more quality to those years, which is even more important. We know that from an, an aging and stress and in the cardiovascular system, it reduces oxidative stress and it upregulates a number of different genes that help protect you from stress. We know from a neurodegenerative standpoint, SIRT1 protects you from Alzheimer's and Huntington's and, and, and myotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease. We also know it reduces the onset of prion disease. Fasting is very powerful. We know over here, we know it protects against chronic inflammation and it reduces replicative lifespan in response to chronic genotoxic stress. So again, going back to protects you from stress, increasing the potential for you to live longer. We also know that fasting SIRT1 increase helps to improve how well your hormones work. So it increases hormonal efficiency and increases modulation of transcriptional repressors. So very important, a lot of benefits of fasting that are documented in the research and that's just those are just the benefits of SIRT1, right? Which was one of the benefits I showed you a minute ago. Um, let's see here, some additional benefits. Let's pull this one up. So this one published in the Annual, annual Review of Nutrition shows some of the other additional um, kind of broken down a little bit easier to understand, but time-restricted feeding. So this goes back to what are we talking about? We're talking about intermittent fasting, right? Time-restricted feeding the benefits, it reduces reactive oxygen species. So basically it reduces your body's capacity at producing uh, harmful free radicals. Um, it improves the stress response. It improves sleep and motor coordination. So again, fasting can improve your ability to get a good night's sleep. It counters fatty liver. So those of you that struggle with liver issues or have been, ever been told that you have a fatty liver, you know, just like fasting can help to reduce fat accumulation in your fat cells, it can help to reduce fat accumulation in your liver. That's what reduced steatosis 
means. We also know it improves the cellular defense mechanisms within the liver, things like glutathione production. We know that fasting improves gut integrity. So going back to what I showed you earlier, which is, you know, when you've been eating gluten and you've been eating foods you're reactive to and your gut's damaged and you're not digesting and you've got malnutrition, you've got leaky gut, we know that fasting helps reset the gut, okay, and get the gut moving in the right direction so it can start working again. So that's maintaining gut integrity. Now, one of the things that we know fasting can do is it promotes vaso or vagal tone. So those of you who've ever heard of the parasympathetic nervous system, this is your, is your relax, digest, and rest. This is the nervous system that controls these primary functions, relaxation, digestion, and rest. And fasting helps to activate. So a lot of you are looking for ways to overcome your stress, years of chronic stress, whether you've had you know, past childhood history of stress, whether you've had food-induced stress, whether you've had inflammation, uh, whether you've struggled with stress because of bad relationships, doesn't matter. No matter what kind of chronic stress that you've had that's led to inflammation, fasting helps reset the parasympathetic nervous system tone or response, which is, again, it's gonna help when you can relax and digest and rest better, you heal better. If you're, if you're in a chronic state of sympathetic tone, which is the opposite of the fight or flight, we talked about this a number of times, then you're not relaxing, digesting, and resting. Your body is primed to run, escape. All the blood flows away from your gut and it flows into your muscle to try to prepare you for a fight or a flight. And so we don't wanna be here. We don't wanna live here. This, is, this chronic stress right here will eat you alive slowly inside. So we know that fasting helps to, to increase parasympathetic vagal tone. Remember, you, you have vagus nerve that feeds your GI tract is very critical in your parasympathetic nervous system response. We know that time-restricted or fasting also, time-restricted feeding blocks white adipose cell hypertrophy, so it prevents fat cells from getting too large, and it also prevents your brown fat from, from accumulating white fat. Remember, white fat's the stubborn fat. It's the stuff that's hard to get rid of, whereas brown fat, uh, not so much. And then reducing heart aging, it preserves cardiac contractility, increases electrical uh, conductivity of the heart, and it improves proteostasis in the heart. We know that it preserves your muscle fitness. So if you want to, if you're trying to get in shape and you've struggled, right, and you're eating these, you know, a lot of the the old school methodology was eat six small meals a day to keep your metabolism burning, right? That's totally a myth, by the way. We want to we want to have periods of fast because it preserves your muscle fitness. Now you can take this too far if you're doing you know three day fasts on a super frequent basis, or you're getting into six and seven day fasts. You're actually going to start eating into your muscle tissue. But if you're doing intermittent fasting, this is one of the best ways to preserve muscle tissue because of the hormonal response that occurs when you are fasting. So again, a lot of benefits you know linked up to fasting. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.